Sauce here. This is a video lesson on integrals, properties of integrals that involve the integrand. The integrand of an integral is the function that we're finding the area under. We're going to attempt to discover a general property of integrals by looking at a specific example. I'm going to graph the simple equation y equals x and compare it to the equation y equals 2x. The values of the top function are literally twice the values of the lower function. But how would the areas under the curve of these two functions compare? If I wanted to calculate the area under x from 1 to 2, I could use an integral. I could use geometry, but this is a simple case. How does it compare to the area under the same range from 1 to 2 of 2x? Well, if the area calculation involves a base and a height, the change in x is going to remain the same. We have the same bounds of integration, but the heights are going to compare one is double the other. In that calculation, if I keep a base the same and double the height, then I'm going to calculate double the area. I could represent this with integrals. The integral from 1 to 2 of the top function 2x with respects to x will compare with the integral on the same bounds from 1 to 2 of the bottom function x with respects to x. How do these two areas compare? The area under the curve of the top function is going to be twice the area under the curve of the lower function because the top function is literally twice as high. These are equal if I double the area under the curve of x. Now take a look at how we set up these integrals. In general, if I integrate by some constant times a function, then it will be equal to the same integral as if I brought out the constant in front to multiply later and calculated the area under the curve of just the function. In this specific example, the area under 2x is equal to 2 times the area under x. The constant 2 was brought out in front to multiply after integrating. This general property of integration will work for any function or a constant times any function and can be very useful when integrating the function becomes difficult. We simplify by bringing a constant out before attempting to integrate. Let's take a look at the graph of another function. In this case, we're going to graph the specific function x squared plus 4x plus 5. It's a parabola. And we can think of the area from some starting place in the domain to an upper bound b. The area into the function is an area that we can't use geometry to calculate. We can set up a definite integral from a to b under this curve, x squared plus 4x plus 5, with respects to x. If we were to proceed to find a value, we would need to be given numbers for a and b and we'd be able to, or we would need to be able to, integrate 
x squared plus 4x plus 5, which may be challenging. Let's observe this function. We can think of the function x squared plus 4x plus 5 as the sum of three separate functions. If we thought of a function x squared as its own distinct function and give it a name f, and then the expression for x we gave as a separate and distinct function g, and we thought of this as its own function, which is constant in this case, then every value that is found on the graph of this quadratic function can be thought of as the sum of the three components, x squared, 4x, and 5, the sum of three distinct functions. In this case, we could write the area under the curve of the quadratic as the area under the curve of those three distinct functions. In other words, I could break up this integrand into three separate integrals, each with its own term, and add them together. We can do this because a quadratic equation, or any equation that is the sum of terms, the values can be thought of as the sum of distinct functions each for each term. So I can also think of the sum of all those values as the sum of the integrals of each of those terms separately. This allows us to think of the general property, the integral of the sum of any number of functions can be expressed as the sum of their separate integrals. Again, this is a general property for integration. It is very helpful because integrating can be very challenging. So if we are to separate the terms of an integrand into their separate integrals, then afterwards we can just focus on integrating separate pieces, simplified pieces, and make it a lot easier.